We're ready to do this. All right, team. So we just had a little bit of technical issues, but everyone was on pins and needles, Anthony, because I was telling everyone how excited I am all morning for this interview. And yes. this is a story of a gentleman that you do not want to miss out on, folks. So Anthony and I have known each other for seven years. He has been doing everything with everyone, with his family, and he has an amazing story. His wife, Jessica, has an amazing story. And he has written a book. There's just so much that goes on with this heart of this gentle giant. Um, so Anthony, I, I know that you mentioned a little bit about where you're from. You talked about you're from Texas, but since we're restarting the recording, your audio now sounds fantastic. Give everyone a little bit of background on you again on yourself. Okay. Yes. I'm, um, I'm originally from uh, Texarkana, Texas. Uh, I'm right now living in El Paso, Texas. And uh, I'm prior military, prior army. <clears throat> um, I used to work for uh, NASA, and uh, right now I'm doing contracting. Um, I'm also, since Jeremy called me the gentle giant, as you can tell, I'm probably big. So um, I did play football, play arena football for like a number of years as well. And uh, I went to school up at uh, Kent State University up in Ohio. Um, and like I said, right now I'm currently doing contracting, and I actually just returned back all about three weeks ago. Um, I have a have a son uh he's doing contracting as well he's 29 years old and then my wife and then i have uh two bulldogs mia and bear so <laughs> and uh and like i said uh you know uh i, I have been through a lot um uh, and me and jeremy we go way back um he was my instructor years ago me and my wife ashley uh was teaching us in uh trading and options and everything and uh such a wonderful teacher. Um, you can ask him anything. I think his motto is still is uh, there's no uh, dumb question or stupid answer or anything like that. He said, just, you know, just throw it out there, you know? So. Yeah. Well, so I appreciate, I appreciate it, man. And we, we had a great, so guys, we had like an hour conversation and then I was like, I wish I had recorded that phone call. So <laughs> we're, we're going to talk a little bit about Anthony's journey. We're also going to talk about his mindset. Um, we're going to talk about how long it took him to get profitably trading. Uh, we're also going to talk a little bit about just how he overcomes a lot of hurdles. But give us some background on your trading. Like, how did you get involved in the stock market? Um, actually, uh, I was opening the tar. And uh, like I said, me and my wife, you know, we were both in contracting at the time. And uh, we had a coworker of ours uh, told us about a trading school. And uh, so, you know, we, we started uh, doing the trading school and something. I think it lasted for like about a year. And um, I recently started trading off in options. Uh, options just intrigued me. So once I got into options, and I was doing really well. Uh, matter of fact, I was like doing options, like uh, calls and puts, just like it was just second nature, uh, just from the, the teachings and the uh the samples and everything that I had got, you know, going through schooling and stuff. And uh, it, it came really easy to me. So, you know, I was doing day trading and everything and, and like, it was just an easy transition. So any money that I, you know, spent on the class and stuff, I probably made it back within the first or second week. Uh, once I started trading um, during that time, uh, when me and my wife was deployed, <clears throat> we came home on, on break. And that's when my wife was diagnosed uh, with stage four breast cancer. So after that, um, I stopped trading. I want to say that was in 2000, uh, I want to say 2014. Yeah, that was in 2014. And then, you know, I just stopped trading like all together. Um, you know, I had to switch my mode uh, from being a, a very uh, supportive husband and, uh, and a caregiver. So, you know, I just kind of, pushed everything to the side, but everything that I learned was literally embedded, still in my brain. It was still there. Everything was there. It's kind of like it was just dormant. So, um, uh, like Jeremy was saying, you know, I went through a lot, uh, with my wife and stuff and everything, uh, through countless surgeries and, you know, and like I said, I wrote a book, uh, of our experience, you know, to help people, uh, just to show them, you know, everything that we went through. So, you know, if they're going through anything and stuff like that, just, you know, kind of read our book to know that they're not alone out of the world of the things that they're going through. And uh, during that time, uh, I had a uh, awakening moment. 
and um, you know, just uh, I guess like a, a spiritual journey, uh, just from going through so much at a short amount of time. And um, I started getting to the point where I can see things like really clear. And I hadn't even started trading again or anything. I just been on that spiritual journey, learning to um, to give people in my life uh, things that happened to me when I was a kid. I start to realize that um, as a kid, <clears throat> things happen to you. Things happen to a lot of people, uh, <clears throat> whether you're abused or homeless or anything, anything, anything that happens to you when you're a kid. I learned not to take that that experience over to my adult life. And once I learned that, I learned to forgive, uh, you know, people in my life, uh, and, yeah. uh, and that was in the past, you know, so I wouldn't carry it forward. I love that. So, yeah, I love that. And we're going to definitely dive into the spiritual journey for sure as well. Um, before we do okay. that, tell us a little bit about, cause you have kind of like naturally just been a good trader. I mean, what, what is it that you look for? Like if you can sum up your skill sets as a trader, I mean, why'd you do so good so quickly? Um, well, because I, I guess I was looking at, uh, I would look at the company and then I would uh, look at the background of the CEOs, um, look at, where the company was and look where they are now as far as like their quarterlies or, or any new inventions. Um, and then check to see if the companies were like in that new, in a trend, like, uh, you know how some things like you're in a, like they're in a trend and then all of a sudden, you know, everything starts to, starts to change over. Like, like what's going on right now with the oil and then the EV. So I yep. started noticing like, you know, transitions and trends like that. And then I was looking to see if the company was falling in a trend of that specific year or this specific, you know, century or whatever. And then I would just put all of that together. Got it. So you're just kind of doing like some valuation macro level things where you're just kind of reading through and trying to find out what it is. What options were you buying? Was it long term? Was it short term? Three months out, four months out? Oh no, they they were definitely short term. Um, I was doing like uh, I said like um, I said probably like a month out, and plus on top of that, I was doing uh, just uh, day trading too as well. So I was I was doing like um, I would set up probably like two or three calls, one or two puts, and and I remember when I first started trading, I was like, man, that's a lot, you know, especially when you was telling me how you were. Uh, doing puts and calls, like, yeah, man, you know, I got like three or four over here and I got this over here. I'm like, man, that's, you know, as a student, I'm sitting there thinking, well, that's a lot, you know. But then <laughs> once I got through everything and I didn't realize that I was doing like two or three calls over here on this company and two or three puts over here. And then I was doing a, you know, a quick day trade and stuff. And I was just like, wow, you know, everything sort of kind of just speeded up. Yep. Yep. No, it makes, makes sense. When did you sell your options? Was there a specific, profit percent you went for or do you kind of just feel it out uh no actually you know what there was a, a certain uh profit percentage because my thing was you know even though we set a date um anything can happen in between from the time you set that that put or that call to that specific date so so constantly you need to say to yourself okay Am I going to push it to get to the date? Am I after a certain percentage or am I after a certain amount of money or, you know, what, whatever it is, that's each individual's uh, uh, pick of what they want to do. So mine was just a certain, a certain percentage or a certain amount of money, you know, and, and definitely more than what I started off with. So I wouldn't, majority of the time, I would never make it to that date or even close to that date. You know, so say like if I paid like, uh, just for an example, if I paid uh, eighteen hundred dollars for um, uh, for like uh, ten calls, and next thing you know, the you know the date's like, we say like a month out, but if I'm already at like within the second week, I'm already at like fourteen thousand or twenty four thousand. It doesn't make any sense to keep pushing it to that week or that two weeks because any news can come out, anything catastrophic with the dial or anything like that can happen. So, you know, I, I didn't start off with that. I, I see that now and I'm, I'm making it. Then I just go ahead and just cash out. Yeah, no, it makes, makes perfect sense. I mean, that's, again, mm -hmm. a lot of trade, a lot of traders with options, they, 
I would say they press their luck, but they'll they'll be up a nice ROI and they'll just keep holding and holding and holding. And sometimes yeah. it's like, well, hey man, if it's a shorter term trade, you're the options are leveraged. You already have a nice win. Just book it, lock it in, and move on to the next one. Yes, exactly. Because I've seen too many people try to push it and push it and push it. And next thing you know, they lose everything. Yep, you are correct. You're very correct. So I, mm -hmm. when we were talking on the phone, you mentioned you you held like a training course when you were in, what country was it? Oh, over in Iraq. Iraq. Tell us a little bit about that. Okay, so, um, yeah, my son was, he, you know, he kept on telling me about uh, the Robin Hood trading platform and, you know, going through school. I was on TD Ameritrade, and they're always at, um, uh, trying to better uh, TD Ameritrade, with, you know, like different, uh, with different uh, pieces that they put off in the platform. So, you know, it's like it's ever growing, it has a lot of technical, and sometimes, you know, that can be overwhelming for people. So, but for me, from starting on TD Ameritrade, when I got on Robinhood, it was, to me, it was really easy. So I, I started teaching this class over there and I was supposed to only have like two students in the class. And when I walked over there, I had 12 people in the class. <laughs> so it just so happened, yeah. So it just so happy, you know, I started teaching the class and stuff. And like I said, all this information has been dormant since 2014. This is my first time going back to trading. So this is how embedded all that information that you guys have thought of me from the teaching, it was embedded and all of a sudden it just got triggered. So um, I had a student there that uh, he, I can't remember the, uh, the company that he had, but he paid $4.44 um, for the shares. And I can't remember how many shares he had, about four to 600 shares. So, and at the time I was teaching them how to, you know, read the candles and, you know, if it does this, you know, the route it takes and everything. So it just yep. so happened after the class, he came up to me and he was like, Hey, you know, well, show me if a stock takes off running, what it'll look like. And then when it, when it plateaus, when it comes down and the sell off and everything. So I was like, okay. So I, I showed it to him and I said, well, you know, it'll go up and then it'll do a little curve. And then I said, it'll go go sideways. I said, once it goes sideways, that's an indication that everybody's selling. I said, once they sell, I said, we don't know how long it's going to run, but I said, the bottom will drop out of it. So I said, if you see this indication, I said, especially if you don't know how to read candles, you can read the solid lines. I said, when you see it curves, it will curve around and start to come down, but then it goes straight, that's everybody's selling. So I said, you have a, a quick decision to make in between that flat part of it going sideways to it hits a low V to it goes all the way down. So he was like, okay. So it just so happened right after I taught this class, the next day it happened to him. I was asleep and he was like freaking out over at his building, over in his room. And he said, the stock shot up from out of nowhere to $132. It looped down. He got in a panic and then he's like, let me calm down. Anthony just showed me this yesterday. It <laughs> went sideways. It went sideways at $125.32. He sold out, and then the bottom fell out of it, and he made $16,500. He said, man, he said, that's the most I have ever made. And he made that in three hours. Love it. Love it, love it. I mean, a little bit of a blend of luck, but being in the right time in the right place and also having the expertise and the knowledge to get in and get out. I mean, that's that's the stock market, yeah. man, right? That's what's incredible. That's why we all love it. It's an amazing opportunity. Exactly. It's unlike anything else. Yeah everyone can be a part of yeah yeah love it man and, and love you, it. yeah and the fact that you're over there in iraq getting people together were these um military or were these contractors or who are the people that you're working with oh uh, it was uh it was contractors in military because you know I, I taught the class just to show them like you know you can be in charge like you always taught me you can be in charge of your financial destiny you know you can be in charge of it and that's literally what i was talking I was showing them that they can do it. Love it. Love you it. Know. Love it. Yeah. And like I said, just, just having that, man, just sometimes having the confidence of someone like you who has done really well trading. Yeah. To tell other people, Hey man, you can do this. Like this, this can happen for you. And I, you had such a, you know, you and Jessica went through so much. And again, if you guys know someone or have someone that went through anything similar, I mean, Anthony's Anthony's book is phenomenal. A husband, best friend, and caregiver: the struggle within. Very well written and uh, easy easy read. 
very insightful and very heartwarming. But what's interesting is Anthony also reached out um, and was mentioning to me that he kind of listened to one of my broke to woke series and was just kind of going through some of the podcasts. And there's a certain moment in time where uh, Anthony was talking about where he kind of just realized the big macro version of the world. You want to kind of tell us a little bit about that? Yes. Um, the, the whole big macro of the world. Well, let me, let me go back to your book right quick. So, you know, Jeremy wrote a book as well and, uh, money does grow on trees. And he was, when I was reading that book, he was giving me so many flashbacks, especially the part when he was in college and he was in the grocery line and sitting there thinking if he had enough on that car and he was just giving me so many flashbacks. (laughs) Um, you know, and it's like, you know, we both follow the same path. Everybody has that same experience. And it was just, I kept on reading that book. It was just each time it was just giving me just so many flashbacks. Yeah. I mean, we, but, uh, we, we grew up, man. And we weren't rich. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, definitely. But, uh, but yeah, but the, the, the whole thing with me, um, like I said, just I was just looking at everything as, as a as a whole, you know, as far as like with the stocks and everything and stuff like that, and 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 like I said, you know, just showing those guys over there that, you know, like I said, you know, you can be in charge of your of your own destiny and everything, um, you know, with the stocks and everything and and, and the fear, um, you know, I had to teach them as far as like the fear, and and. You know, when I talked to him about the fear and I asked him, I was like, well, what do you, what do you fear as far as like doing the stocks and stuff? And, you know, it was always the same thing, you know, losing money. And I said, so let me ask you, what plays in your head? And they literally tell me that they picture themselves losing the money. And I had to let them know, like, well, you do realize that that event hasn't happened yet. I said, that event up in your head is a recording of what could happen. But I said, the event hasn't happened yet. So mm. to break them up their yeah, so to break them up the fear of their fears, I had to show them that you are literally playing a recording in your head of losing money. I said that event hasn't happened yet. So therefore, I said that event hasn't happened yet. I said you need to trade like with, with confidence, and then instead of uh, picturing you losing money, picturing you re- replace that recording with you making money instead of losing money and making the right moves and the strategies and everything. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, tell, tell us a little bit more about that fear. I mean, what, what, why do you think people are so afraid of losing money? Well, um, the one I, I realized, no matter how much money you make, because, you know, we're contracting, so we make hundreds of thousands of dollars out there. So it, it's just the fact of just watching the money like leave so easily. They look at it like, as far as like, um, like they put the money in the account and then they do a trade and then they say, no, the market does what it does. And they literally see it dwindle, dwindle down and, and they feel like they're, they're helpless. So I had to explain to them that, you know, when you do stocks and stuff, there is a such thing, you know, it stops. And I had to explain the stops and uh, the limits, everything. I have to explain everything to them. Yep. And said, you know, there are, yeah, there are tools that can help you, you know? And um, the, the other thing was, as far as I'm doing a research, I said, your research in the companies uh, that you are uh, buying the stock in actually helps keep the fear down. So the more research you do, it actually helps stabilize that fear when you do your research instead of somebody running over to you and say, Hey man, grab this stock, get this, buy this. So of course that fear is going to be there because somebody told you about it. It was just word of mouth. But if you do your own research, that's another part of helping you stay calm. Yep. You're so right. I mean, it, it's having sometimes just, again, the confidence of knowing that how these mechanisms in the market work, stop losses yeah. and orders that you can do some research mm-hmm. that you can set up some analysis in advance that you can really create yeah. the, that you can create a plan ahead of time rather than acting mm-hmm. in the exact moment yes exactly and and you know and, and i asked them you know what would cause you to panic 
they were like, well, if a stock does this and if it does this, and I said, well, that's why you need, and, and I think back in the day when we were, when you was teaching us, we would call it like a, kind of like, I guess, like a grocery list, <laughs> like a plan or a grocery list, like, <laughs> so yeah, I told him, I said, just write down scenarios of how you would react, just write down different scenarios, okay, like if stock does this, you know, I, I would like to cash out this amount of percentage or, you know, whether it goes up or down. I said, just write it out because I said, when you write it out, that actually keeps you um, in tune with what's going on. And I said, you can think, Charles, because you already wrote down different scenarios or you wrote down, okay, I would do this, I would do that, I would do this, if this does this. So when it does it, you don't get in a panic and you just act I mean, you can literally just look at it and be like, okay, I can do this without any panic. Yep. Absolutely key. Mm -hmm. Absolutely key. How do you, what, what's your biggest or best trade so far in your life, Anthony? Do you remember? Uh, yes. Uh, my best trade was uh, actually, uh, everybody probably could relate to this, it just happened on uh, Nikola. So there was a bunch of hype around Nikola and everything and stuff. And, and, um, you know, and like I said, I got wind of the hype too as well. And uh, I bought in at 32 and it went all the way up to 93, uh, 99. And, uh, yeah. that was, uh, yes. So I, I made quite a bit on that. And then, um, uh, after that one, um, I went over to, uh, shell, which is a uh, Hedion S H L L. So <clears throat> I moved the money over from Nikola and then went over to shell. And one day that one shot up, I had uh, quite a bit of shares, a couple of thousand shares. And I made uh, probably around about $75 in one day, uh, 75000 in one day. And then the, the, the uh, week before that, I made 65000 in one day. And I think the lowest I made was 17000 Love it. My man, there we go. Now, when you were doing this, like, again, when you're doing the research, what did you do? Like, what did you read on? Oh, uh, I just read on the, uh, like I said, the, I, I just noticed a change over overall, the overall market. I noticed a change over with the oil and then the EVs and there was more EVs and then we had the SPACs that was coming in. So, and then, and, and, and like I said, it's just uh, the, the innovation that was coming in, the disruptive innovation that was coming in. Um, also, that's when uh, Apple had split and uh, Tesla had split. So I was just like, wow. And I did a lot of research on um, like Neo, uh, LI, which are two uh, China EV companies and stuff. So it was just so much that was coming. And then I realized, wait a minute, we're in a transition. And this is the best time when to make some money and get with new companies because we're in a transition period. Yeah. Yep. Now, here's what's cool. I want to make sure that people are aware of this. Like you did the research. You thought mm -hmm. it through, you analyzed it, you bought some serious size, as you said, thousands of shares, which at the end of the day, those stocks weren't really that expensive when you bought them. I and mean, when you bought Shell, no, they, it was no, like they weren't. 20, 23 ish a share. So you buy 3,000 shares, $75,000 investment, give or take. You know, it's not like an outrageous yeah, bought, sum of money. No, because I bought the shares between, uh, I had a point where I was going to, where I bought the shares. So I bought the, uh, the shares between uh, 12 and $18. So I loaded up between 12 and $18. My man. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Very, very nice. So in that situation, as you're doing that, when you're buying shares, again, a lot of traders, man, they have that. And one of the reasons I want to talk to you, they do have that fear of what if I'm wrong? What if I lose? The reason I want to do this full circle is because when you take a trade like this, even though you have all of this analysis, you have all this confident yeah. information, you have the trend, you have the, the changing of the landscapes, you have all these things going with you, you still got out of the trade, <laughs> right? Yes, yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yes. And that's the key and, that I need and, to understand to people is like, you can, you can marry a position for a week. Like where you get in it, you make your money and you move on. You do a lot of analysis, a lot of research. You pull the plug with some size. You still had a stop loss in place, right, Anthony? Yes. Yes, I did. Yeah. So it's like you had an amount of money mm -hmm. that you're willing to lose. You did the research. You yes. put in the time. You pulled the trigger and you still got out and took your profits and just moved on to something else. Like that's amazing. 
Yes, yes. And the, and the other thing which you were saying about the about the fear. So I'll tell you guys a uh, one of the moves that I made, and and this will help you. Uh, and this will definitely help you have confidence in yourself. So I had made a trade over to uh, uh, Workhorse. I had put Workhorse in my portfolio. Something happened that day to where I lost over ten thousand dollars on on Workhorse, and I also I went into margins. So I lost ten thousand dollars on Workhorse. And then I went over ten thousand dollars in margins. So I think the whole scary thing for me was I had five thousand dollars. So I put five thousand dollars, and I was still five thousand dollars short. So, like I said before, Jeremy, you met my wife, sweetheart, a very kind lady. Um, but I had to call her and say, you know, explain to my wife, hey, I went into the margins. She said, how much did you go in? I said, uh, I said, I already put five thousand. I said, I went over ten. She was like, okay. She said, did you learn from it? I was like, yes, I did. She was like, okay. So she sent me sent me five thousand. But this is the part where you have to believe in yourself and what you're doing. And you're going to make mistakes. Uh, we're not perfect. We're human. Uh, but just always learn from your mistakes. So three days later. I ended up making thirty-seven thousand. Hey, what? Did, how was, long ago was that? Do you remember? Or was that like when the run-up wasn't in June? Yes. Uh huh. Yes. Okay. So I yeah, because I sold out of workforce and then I put uh, I loaded more into I, I want to say Shell, and I think that's when Shell hit fifty-six ninety-nine or something like that. Nice, 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 nice. So, mm. all right. Well, before we get into some of the other really cool deep stuff. What's the next macro change? Like, what are we getting in on, man? Um, you know what? That's a good question. There's a whole lot of facts out there uh, that's doing autonomous. Uh, the, the, you know, in the EV, like I said, the EV stuff is, is uh, it, it's moving up pretty fast. So I'm kind of just looking at stuff just with the EV right now because that seems like it's the strongest uh, up-and-coming disruptive uh stocks or companies that's out there in that for industry yeah i mean look at neo like it's not it's not joking you know oh no no i'm I'm very impressed with neo i did the research on the ceo uh and she is a very uh wonderful lady uh very uh driven um and and i was very impressed when they had that autonomous uh horse car go around the track by itself doing 160 miles an hour uh, they remind me of a young Lexus. Uh, when when Lexus first came out, uh, they remind me of Lexus when they first came out. Yeah, and I like it too that you like you're putting a lot of boots on the ground when you're when you're coming to you know you're going to different countries, you're doing contracts, and like you're over there asking other people other questions too. This this is not just your insight. It's not just you sat down and one day it popped in your brain. Like I said, you're going to doing research, you're going to YouTube, you're reading articles, you're pouring over who these mm-hmm. people are, and you're reading internally about who is who is great and what they're doing and how they're doing it. Yes, exactly. I am. Yes. Yeah, a lot of information from people from looking at YouTube videos, all of us are sharing information and everything. So Anthony, you've made hundreds of thousands of dollars trading the stock market for you, you and me both coming from a poor financially downtrodden background. Yeah. Where, where are you going from here, man? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, probably to real estate next. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Okay. So you conquer. Now you're still going to do stocks? Yes, I'm still going to do stocks and I'm going to uh, start working on actually I'm uh, ordering. Uh, I'm going to uh, register for the school this week for uh, to be a uh, realtor. Got it. Got it. Got it. I like it. So do it. So doing both, man. That's that's how billionaires are made. A little bit of real estate, a little bit of stocks. Yes. And by mm-hmm. a little bit, I mean a exactly. lot of it. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> a lot of both. So, man, when you're in some of these positions, because uh, again, you're buying thousands of shares, you've made hundreds of thousands of dollars. You're doing phenomenal trading, and also, I'm so proud of you, man. Let me make sure I say that. I'm just so thrilled Thank that you. you're doing so well. What? H- how do you stay so calm when you're in size like this? Like, how when you buy shares, you're in thousands of shares on a company that's relatively new, and you don't know that much about it. Yes, it could win. Yes, it could lose. How do you stay calm? What do you do? Um, but like I said, the uh, uh, the research and everything that that keeps me calm. Uh, the other thing is having someone else 
uh, that's doing it with you. Like, you know, like my wife, my wife keeps me calm. Uh, when I see things that I don't really understand, like what's going on, uh, and it's like, okay. And, you know, and so, you know, it's always good to have a, a second opinion, a second eye. So I talk to my wife and, you know, she kind of goes through, she's like, yeah, you know, this is this, and you know, some things, some of this don't make sense. And, and together, you know, we just kind of bump heads and come up with an analogy and everything and stuff. But yeah. Uh, yeah. When I, yeah, when I can't keep calm myself, it's, it's my wife having that, that significant other or that person that you talk to that you share sure. information with. I don't think that's big, man. Cause again, that's, you brought that up a lot in your book where, you know, the communication, how much you guys talk back and forth and yeah. how you've had to humble yourself a few times and how she had to humble herself a few times. And like, there's no, in, in, in a relationship like that, it's not a winner or a loser. It's a teamwork and you are all back it and is. forth, always chatting. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, exactly. We, we are always communicating. What about like, do you meditate or anything? Yes, I do. Actually, uh, <laughs> that's funny that you bring that up. Yes, I actually, uh, I wake up around about four or five in the morning. Uh, I meditate, um, say some prayers. Uh, I normally meditate at least uh, twice a day. Um, and I'm always doing, uh, like I said, just, just research and stuff, not just with the stocks and everything, just, you know, on my spiritual journey and everything. So. Got it. So what, what's your daily routine look like? Um, I normally go to the gym, like in the morning or in the afternoon, work out for about an hour, hour and 30 minutes. Um, I look at, uh, different stocks on a uh, seeking alpha, just go through just to see, you know, uh, how they react into the market. I look at market news, uh, stuff like that. And then, um, once I do that, you know, I, uh, listen to a couple of my books. I have a lot of, uh, a lot of books that I listen to. I normally listen to like two or three books at a time. So I listen to my books. I go through one, listen to the other, then listen to the other one. And then I'll meditate uh, for probably about an hour. Uh, meditate. Uh, and then uh, just go back to my daily routine as far as like taking my dogs out, uh, grounding myself. Uh, <laughs> it's funny. I, I took my dogs out to a park and I took my shoes off. And everybody's like, oh, why is this guy walking around with his shoes off? And to me, you know, when I go outside, uh, especially with my dogs, you know, I have to park and stuff. I just ground myself, uh, you know, I just walk around barefoot. It kind of helps reset me, uh, reset my brain and stuff. And uh, the other thing, when I go work out, um, it, it helps me to reset. So it's always a good thing to always reset, especially when you're looking at stocks and everything like that. So, and meditation mm. help as well. Mm. Mm -hmm. Got it, got it, got it. So you've done, you've done a lot of inner work why yes yes i have why, why have you done that like what why and how well you know what i found that it, it well one uh for my own well-being uh, uh it to me it makes me feel you know like if you if you go out to a buffet or you know you eat a bunch of food and you just feel that heavy that that weightness from all the heavy foods and stuff and uh and then, like, it's like, um, you know, when you fast and then you eat your first meal, but you have to eat it, like, really light. And then once you eat that first meal and everything adjusts in your body, you feel that lightness. So, well, I found out that that lightness gives you that sharpness. So things that you're seeing that you wouldn't normally see. So once I started realizing this, you know, I, I instantly became a vegan. I stopped eating meat, uh, became a vegan. And um, uh, just, in, you know, input it just more like, uh, you know, because I got to have the meat for the protein and stuff. So I just implemented more powder protein. I know a lot of people are like, well, man, you're not eating any meat, but you're working out. So, yeah, I implement a lot of protein and stuff. But I found out with that, me feeling light and then meditating and stuff, I literally can see stuff sharper. I'm better at trading and everything. And I think that's what helps the, the whole control of the panic thing as well. Are you sure? Like, is that true that, you, that it actually helps? <laughs> you, you feel lighter, you think better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When you feel better, you can trade better. You uh, can, your decisions are like really crisp. You know. Dude, so you're so you're full vegan now. Yes, I am. Love it, man. That that was a that yeah. would be a big transition in your life because you're a pretty heavy protein meat eating kind of guy. Well, this is the thing, and a lot of people don't know this. So when me and Jeremy met, 
I was 285 pounds. Now I'm down to 254. There you go. And by the way, 285, like we're talking rock solid. <laughs> just, just guns <laughs> for days. <laughs> yeah, but awesome, man. Lost 30 pounds. So you feel so you probably feel lighter on your feet. You still hitting the gym pretty hard. Yeah. What kind of workouts do you do when you hit the gym? Uh yeah. So um I, I have noticed it took me a while to get my energy back up and stuff, you know, from from getting off the off the meat and everything and stuff. And, and like I said, um what the adjustment I had to do, I had to take protein before I go work out, and then probably about 30 minutes to an hour after the gym, and then I take some more protein. And literally that's what stabilized that's what stabilized my body um, and give me energy going to the gym. And then when I come back, when I take the protein, I say about 30 minutes to an hour after I work out, that's actually when you introduce the protein to your body around about that time. Um, it actually helps you keep a lot of the muscle that you built up because I know a lot of people have went through what I went through where when you go work out, when you come home, you just want to just raid the, the ice box and the pantry and everything, just eat, eat, eat. But the whole part of that is your body is really not craving the food. It's craving the protein out of the food. So that's what causes you to eat more, eat, eat, eat. But if you introduce protein into your body for uh, the very first time when you get that craving after working out, then that will literally settle your appetite down and then you won't eat as much, hence, which keeps your waist down and keeps you toned. Mm. Mm. Calories in, calories out, right, man? Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Now, Anthony, do you normally swing trade or do you day trade at all? Um, you know what? Uh, I did, uh, uh, some, some day trading, uh, when I was over in Iraq and stuff. And, uh, you know, now that I'm at home, I'm just kind of just, you know, I just got my stocks right now. I haven't did any day trading or anything. I, I haven't did any, uh, uh, put the call, but the eight or nine months I was over there, I was, I was aggressively doing uh, calls and, uh puts and stuff and um so i think the last one i did about three weeks before i came home i did one on uh i had a long one i said about three weeks to four weeks ago i did one on shell and i cashed out at uh i made twenty two thousand seven hundred on that one was that a day trade or like or just a fast in and out uh, oh no no, no, that was a, that was a call. That was probably about a month out, but I ended up cashing out like within, I made that within like two weeks. Okay. So when you're in a position yeah. like that, I mean, what, um, like, like I said, when you, you're buying calls, is it in the money or out of the money? No, um, let me see. Uh, my answer, that one was, that one was in the money. Uh, but like I said, I knew as far as the, the CEO, the, the innovation and everything up in my head, I was kind of like, well, you know what? I know this, I can go to this, you know, but I, I don't know if it can go, you know, I think the highest one they had was like 80 or $85. I was like, ah, oh, no, not in this amount of time, but I know that it can probably go, you know, to this point. And I think my break even point was like 36 uh, I want to say 36, 35, and it shot all the way up to like 49 or 50 or 51, something like that when I had those in. Yeah, gotcha. Uh, mm -hmm. So how many how many contracts? Um, do oh, you I had 10. I had uh, two. I had, let me see. I had uh, two calls with 10 contracts in each one. Got it. Got it, got it, got it. Yeah. So two different strikes. So the change, what, what's your thoughts on it changing to from H S H L L to H-Y-L-N? Um, you know what? <laughs> yeah, the, the thing was, you know, everybody, including myself, um, I was expecting it to do what Nicola did. And I think when Nicola uh, shot up the way it did, uh, Milton, actually, he put in a lot of PR work. And I think that's what helped the stock carry itself all the way up to 93.99. And we're talking about two different CEOs, you know, uh, Thomas Healy. Uh, Thomas Healy is a, he's not a uh, PR type person. He's like, okay, what I see in front of me, that's what I see, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, so when he puts out his information and everything, it's what, what he has, like, right here. He doesn't, he's not one of those people that goes in and 
you know, hypes his stock up and stuff like that. Because you, you have two different ones. You have one from Nikola that hyped the stock up but didn't have any product but pictures. But then you have one that, you know, doesn't know doesn't hype his company and everything, the contract stuff that he has up, but he has tangible assets. He has vehicles out on the road and everything, you know? So, yeah. and then plus, I think a lot of people put into account that he's 28 years old too. So I think they have a lot to do with what's going on with the stock right now. Oh yeah, I would agree on that. And that's, so what's, what's your take on it for uh, next, I don't know, month and a half, two months? Oh, I think long term is fine. Um, I think it's, it's probably gonna go down until he starts getting, uh, until he starts putting out more information. Like I said, they you know need a PR person, or he needs to touch up on being a PR. But the thing is, he needs to be more transparent and, and put out more information. But I think for a long term company, it, it's it's awesome. They have a great product because I used to drive trucks uh, from California to New York, from New York to California, and you know, as soon as I seen uh, that product, I would have drove my truck straight to Austin. And hey, can you switch my truck over? You know, um, and like I said, it, for long term wise, I think it's a Healy is a great investment. Yeah. Okay. Right on. No, I can respect that, dude, for sure. And mm -hmm. um, man, it's uh, you, so Brandon ma makes a really good point in the chat. Pain. He says my buddy was up sixteen thousand on Shell. And I was like, man, you got to lock it in. He said, no, I'm going to sell at 80 and he's still holding. So again, that's the thing is uh, just to reiterate when you're playing these, like you knew that they were a quicker pace. You knew to get in and get out, mm -hmm. lock in your gains and just kind mm -hmm. of, you got to cash in, man, when you're up, stay up and then keep, keep it. Yeah. And that's pretty much what I did. And I'm going to go back in and uh, the gentleman you just said, uh, I'm, you know, let him know I'm going to go back in and buy some more. Kilian. I'm just trying to wait for everything to do what it's, it needs to do because, like I said, within between 2023 and 2024, I look for that stock to be up quite a bit because he has a truck that's a, a ERX truck. And then you figure once California is mandating uh, zero emissions, a lot of these uh, fleets are going to take in the ERX truck and they're going to designate these ERX trucks going to California. Got it. Got it. Got it. What do you think of Beyond Meat? Just now you're uh, you're vegan and you're off of meat. What's your thoughts on that company and or product? Beyond Beyond Meat. Beyond Meat. Um, you know what? I like Beyond Meat. Uh, it caught me totally by surprise. I was doing a little bit of research on it. You know, kind of like you, um, kind of like you look over to the right and you see that you see that name Beyond Meat. Like, okay, I see it, but uh, you know what? I'm gonna go back over here and do my thing and you know when i should have really paid attention to it uh beyond me i think it's really good they already got a contract uh with burger king so they're slowly getting contracts and then there is another one that's getting ready to come out now where i think uh fmci and that's uh, uh tattoo chef and then you also have another one atella uh so that's another one so you have you have a couple of them coming up so uh but Beyond Meat is doing really well. I think it caught a lot of us by surprise because I'm probably one of those ones like, ah, you know what? And this was way before I became a vegan. I was like, ah, you know what? Nobody's not. But now I'm a vegan. I'm like, you know what? That was a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's good, too. Have you had a lot of it before? No. You know what? Uh, actually, I'm going to, because uh, when all this was going on, you know, like I said, I've been over in Iraq going on nine months. So, you know, when the... Um, when everything broke out and stuff, you know, I, I was, I was stuck over there. So, um, yeah, but I think they have it at, uh, I want to say they have it at Sprouts and Whole Foods. So yeah, yeah so I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna go and purchase some, but, uh, like I said, you have a teller and then you have, uh, what ticker is that? Uh, tattoo show. I want to say it's, uh, they're under F M C I U and then F M C I. Got it. Got it, got it. So that, yeah. yep, there we go. Right on, mm -hmm. man. Well, very and, interesting. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. And then there also are some autonomous ones out there too. So do do your research on the, um, there's a SPAC out there that's backing an autonomous company. 
right now. So I, I can't remember the ticker right off right off hand. I got so many tickers up in my head. So got it. Well, here's what I'm gonna, I'm gonna get you to do at some point, Randall. I'm gonna send you some links, but I'm gonna I'm gonna have you join okay. RLT. Um, when when you because okay. I know you go off and you go off. So when you're when you're on um you're on your trips because we have an RLT military program now where we got all your uh, yeah. servicemen and women there just chatting about the trading and chatting about certain certain setups and uh, posting oh, okay. where they're at. But man, I just I love your value. I've always loved your energy. I just always think you're just such a great resource to not only myself as a friend but just to the world. And you have you have so much wisdom. And I'm just so happy uh, that uh, I was able to reconnect with you. And I'm glad that you're back from Iraq. And I'm glad that Jessica's okay and your book's doing well. I'm just happy that you're doing amazing, man. Yeah, thank you, Jeremy. Thank you so very much. And thank you for being such a great, like I said, guys, uh, back in the day, seven years ago, um, great teacher. And I'm sure he's an even better teacher now. But like I said, the only reason I have all the knowledge that I have and the way I am, like I said, you know, he was taking us through different scenarios and like he's doing now, he takes you through a live trade and show you everything to do. So it was very, very valuable. And, um, and, and the thing I will say to a lot of your students, if I know a lot of you probably sitting there thinking, well, you know, I'm not absorbing this stuff. I'm not absorbing this. I'm going to keep going through it, but I don't think I'm absorbing it. Oh, trust me, you're absorbing it. If I have a last in seven years and then start trading all of a sudden, everything comes straight forward. And this is all, everything that's based on him, everything that he taught us and uh, it's still there. So don't worry, you're absorbing all the information when you don't, when you're not thinking that you are. Yeah, man. Well, dude, I really appreciate it. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your inspiration, your motivation. And uh, I will, we will be seeing you again, man. Okay, then. Thank you, Jeremy, for having me on. My pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. So team, again, my man, Anthony, Seven year hiatus from trading, went through, you know, battled breast cancer with his wife. They went through all that massive struggle together. And now he's back in the game and he's crushing it. So he's always been a great trader, just naturally calm, very intelligent, loves studying and just dominating the markets. Like if, it feels good to win at this stuff. It really does. And it is possible. It's definitely, definitely possible. So I'm going to make sure that Anthony joins RLT soon when he gets, uh, I know he goes on contracting, you know, for three, four, five, six months at a time, but we will continue to inspire the world together. So thank you, thank you, my friend. And for those who are watching, I really appreciate watching this recording and interview and discussion with another real life trader. You rock.